So we recently talked about how the New York State Board of Elections was trying to purge everyone but Joe Biden's name from the ballot in their upcoming primary and how that was being challenged in a court of law by individuals like Andrew Yang and delegates to Andrew Yang. Um, and guess what? I'm sure you already have heard by now, but a judge ruled in Andrew Yang's favor and overturned the decision of the New York State Board of Elections. So, uh, in other words, the primary is back on. Andrew Yang single-handedly saved democracy in New York. Credit where it's due. So, as Matt Stevens and Nick Corasaniti of the New York Times explains, a federal judge on Tuesday ordered election officials in New York State to hold its Democratic primary election in June and reinstate all qualifying candidates on the ballot. The ruling came after the presidential primary was canceled late last month over concerns about the coronavirus. The order, filed by Judge Annalisa Torres of the United States District Court, came in response to a lawsuit filed last week by the former Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang. He sought to undo the New York State Board of Elections decision in late April to cancel the June 23rd contest, a move it attributed to health and safety worries and the fact that the results would not change the primary's outcomes. On Tuesday night, Douglas A. Kellner, a co-chair of the New York Board of Elections, said the board was reviewing the decision and preparing an appeal and speaking on CNN. Governor Andrew Cuomo said the presidential primary would proceed per the court's ruling, at least for the time being, but he noted the potential for an appeal. Okay, so let me just say that uh, this doesn't just put Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang's names back on the ballot. This puts all of the presidential contenders back on the ballot. This isn't just a win for Bernie Sanders supporters. This is a win for everyone who is supporting someone other than Joe Biden, which is most Democratic Party primary voters. Although Andrew Yang is the one who catalyzed this move, and I absolutely applaud him. You've got to give him credit for this. He did this. Bernie Sanders just wrote a strongly worded letter. Andrew Yang took action in the form of filing a lawsuit, and that's what you want to do if you actually want to affect change. So my hat goes off to Andrew Yang. He made the correct choice to do this, and and we all benefit from his courage. So we absolutely have to give Andrew Yang credit. And let me just say for Andrew Cuomo, the fact that him and the New York State Board of Elections are saying they're going to appeal this really shows you the contempt that they have for the Democratic Party's base. It shows you they don't care about democracy, right? And it's not like the DNC is the only institution within the broader party apparatus that's corrupt. I mean, state democratic parties are equally as corrupt. They are all working at the behest of the establishment because, you know, they're going to go where the power is flowing, you know, because that's, that's how they are able to have a bigger influence. So if you side with Joe Biden, he's going to pay you back when he's in power, you know? And I don't know what that looks like. Maybe a position within his administration. Maybe he favors your state in some way. I don't know what that looks like. But I know that power is always what people are going to gravitate to, at least if you're corrupt and career-minded. Um, now, Andrew Yang responded with a statement via Twitter saying, quote, I'm glad that a federal judge agreed that depriving millions of New Yorkers of the right to vote was wrong. I hope that the New York Board of Elections takes from this ruling a newfound appreciation of their role in safeguarding our democracy. And I couldn't agree more. And look, let me just say this. The fact that we even have to challenge the Democratic Party in the court of law in and of itself is just, it shouldn't happen. They're the party that frequently speaks out against the voter suppression tactics and disenfranchisement that happens to their base when the Republicans do it. But here they are doing it to their own base, but not necessarily, you know, the base who uh, they want. The people who aren't going to fall in line, they just kind of want them brushed aside. And even if Joe Biden is a huge favorite to still win the Democratic primary, they still couldn't help themselves. They had to deprive voters of the choice because, you know, it's it's just, that's what they do. <laughs> there's, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. They just have to do things like this to spit in the eyes of the left. But when the left fights back, sometimes you can win. Sometimes you can win. It's just a matter of playing hardball and acknowledging that you can't lie down and take it. And I want this to be a lesson for leftists going forward, right? I thought that Bernie Sanders, you know, speaking out against this was important, but he just sent a letter to the New York State Board of Elections. He sent out an email telling people about what they did. He should have been one of the first people to file a lawsuit. And I'm not trying to dog on Bernie Sanders. And, you know, I don't want you to think that he's a bad person. It just shows you that one of the main things he could have done to possibly win was be stronger, actually take on the establishment. And 
if you want to win, that's what you have to do. It's not an option. You have to do it. And Andrew Yang is clearly playing to win. He put out a tweet saying that he absolutely is taking note of the people who aren't supporting direct cash payments during this pandemic, and rightfully so. I mean, he's the UBI guy. But now is a time where even if you didn't support universal basic income, generally speaking, you should at least support it throughout the duration of this primary. And if you're in the Democratic Party, I mean, it shouldn't even be debatable. So, you know, I applaud Andrew Yang. This was a courageous move, and um, it paid off. And let me just say this. This is something that was risky. Like, Andrew Yang most likely will be running for president again in 2024, assuming Joe Biden uh, isn't able to beat Trump, or assuming he wins and then steps down or something. But he's going to be back. That's the point, right? He's running for president again. And if you want to run for president and you want to be successful in the Democratic Party, one thing that has been abundantly clear is that you have to find a way to win over the establishment and never question them. That's what we saw from Elizabeth Warren. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win. It just means that you'll receive less pushback from the establishment. Now, Elizabeth Warren, she uh, showed you how powerful they are at getting you to roll over and die. And as a result, you know, Democratic Party officials weren't freaking out about her. And they were freaking out about Bernie Sanders. So, I mean, these are the people, theoretically, you'd want to win over if you're going to run for president again. But the fact that Andrew Yang is still challenging them, it shows that, you know, um, he has a good strategy. He knows you have to take on the establishment head on. Otherwise, they're going to steamroll you. Never, ever just, you know, acquiesce. Never just let them get a victory over on you. Always fight, even if it seems like it's a lost cause. Fight, fight fight, never stop fighting. That should be the mentality that we have going forward as a left collectively. Otherwise, we're never going to win. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you think that fighting might not be the good option against the Democratic Party establishment or any institution in the United States, fight that instinct. Fight the system. You have to. Otherwise, you will lose every single time.